Hello. So uh, there has been a lot of debate about device not working well with uh, Ruby on Rails 7. And the most popular solution at the moment is uh, by Go Rails, where they suggest to add uh, a turbo controller into your device.rb. And having read the code, it uh, really looks a bit overwhelming to me and I don't fully understand it. And I think that there is um, easier and much more straightforward to make device plays, uh, play nicely with Ruby on Rails 7. So my idea was to make uh, a whole uh, video on uh, installing device from zero on Ruby on Rails 7 application and troubleshooting it. So let's do that. As you see here, I've just created a new Ruby on Rails 7 app and I'm going to install device. But before installing device, I will add a few pages. I'll add a few static pages. So I would say Rails generate the controller, static pages. I will have a landing page and a dashboard. The idea is that uh, anybody can see the landing page and only logged in users can see the dashboard. So Rails generate controller, static pages, landing page, and dashboard. Let's start the server and navigate to slash static pages slash dashboard. Here's the first page and the second page, uh, landing page. Uh, here it is. So we have two pages in our app. Let's save our changes, git at all, git commit message static pages controller. Okay, and now let's add the device so that we can log into our, our application. So let's go to the official uh, guide. Here we have getting started. I will add gem device to our gem file. And one thing I will change here, I will actually say that we want to use the latest version. So I would say GitHub and go to slash hot combo slash device. And I would say branch would be main. Now I will say bundle. And let's look at our gem file log. Here you see we have explicitly said that we want to get device from uh, this source and the branch that we want to get is main. Okay, so what is next? I'm going to run Rails generate device install. And it has created a device initializer and a locales file. And now we need to add this line to our config development.rb so that we can receive emails in development environment. Then uh, add a root path in our roots. So I will say uh, root to static pages landing page. Then I'm going to add uh, a notice and an alert that we need to get uh, flash messages. So I will add it here. like this. And uh, well, what is next? We need to uh, add a user model so that a user can log in. So I'm going to say Rails generate device user. It will add the migration for creating users in our database and a user model, Rails DB migrate. And uh, now we can say that uh, only logged in users can log into the application. Let's start the server. Let's see one of the pages. So you see, now we're not logged in and we can see the landing page. We can also see the dashboard. So I'm going to add this line before action authenticate user inside our application controller. Let's go to controllers, application controller. And uh, we've added this line. If we refresh, you see, we need to sign in or sign up before continuing. Okay, looks good. So, uh, now we can't see those pages before logging in. So uh, let's uh, save our changes. It is our first success. Git at all, git commit message, install device. Okay, now let's go back and let's try to log in. I will uh, create an account, sign up, and uh, you see no method error. So uh, we actually couldn't log in. Now, how can we troubleshoot this? Uh, the easy way, I'm going to generate device views. So I'm going to say Rails generate device views. 
and I'll actually say, save this as a separate comment. Get add all, get comment message, generate device views. Okay, and uh, what am I going to do now? You see, I've just generated the device views and I have got them locally on my machine, but it will not help me just log in. Uh, what I need to do is uh, go to our controller. So we have our users sign up uh, and the view for this is uh, uh, in uh, views, device, registrations, registrations is signed up and new. So a new registration is signed up. You see, I've got access to this view. I will change something in sign up and you see sign up. So, so I've got access to this view locally and I can edit it. And the whole trick, the whole trick is just uh, to add data turbo false. So I'm disabling turbo on this form and this form will always have a hard full page reload when I submit it. Let's try to create an account now. I will, uh, yeah, I'll refresh it. Uh, I will create an account, sign up. Okay, email has been taken. So let's sign up with another account. And you see, I have successfully signed up. So it works. Let's now, uh, well, display some information about the current user and have a link to uh, sign out. So I'm going to go to application HTML and here I will say uh, equals current user dot email. So we see the current user dot email and we'll have a link to sign out. Now, uh, let's say link to log out and by default, the, the path would be, uh, let's see, let's have a look at our routes. I'll go to slash routes, uh, destroy user session path and method would be delete. So we would have destroy user session path and method delete. Let's see if this works. I click log out. And you see nothing happens because we try to send a get request. Now, using Rails UGS that we had in Ruby Rails 4, 5, 6, uh, this would have worked, but it doesn't work in Rails 7. And instead of having link to method delete, we would uh, have to say something like uh, link to uh, destroy user session path uh, data. And we would say turbo method delete. And this should kind of work. Let's see if it works. I'll go back. I will uh, inspect the element and here I said data turbo method delete. I click log out and it failed. Well, now we have a different error because we're trying to get current user email and we have no current user. So I will say uh, if current user, then we'll have the current user email and link to log out. Okay, so it kind of worked. Let's uh, log back in. Logging in and uh, let's explore some additional ways of how we can make logout work. So another way would be to say uh, data turbo method like this, delete. And this should also work. So you see, it is just somewhat different syntax. I will again click uh, log out. And you see it worked. And another way that would work would be using button two. So I will say uh, equals button two. And here we can just say method delete. And let's see if this works. Let's just see if it works. I click log out and you see it uh, didn't uh, work. We had no page refresh, but if I try to just refresh the page, you see, it actually did log us out, just we didn't have a page refresh. And to actually have a page refresh here, we need to disable turbo. So we would say data turbo false, like this. Let's log in again. Not now. I click, I will first inspect the element. Here we have data turbo false, meaning I will have a full page redirect. I click log out and you see it works. 
And this is, uh, well, these are three ways uh, how logout button can work. And this is the old way. Logout button doesn't work anymore. And uh, the main trick for all the device forms is to generate the device views and everywhere manually add data to the false to all the uh, forms. So here I have registrations new. I would do the same with the registrations edit. Here you see we have HTML method put. I would say also data turbo false. And I would do this in all of the device forms. Same in the passwords, new and edit, and so on. Now, this is uh, some manual work where you update all your device forms, but in the end, you will always want to customize the way they look. And uh, you don't have to write any fancy uh, overwhelming logic inside your device.rb. Uh, and it is much easier to maintain uh, just one line in the, your views rather than maintaining uh, a lot of uh, controller logic. So that's about it. All you need to do is add data to be false to your forms, to your device forms. And uh, here are a few different ways to make the link to log out work. Okay. And uh, let's just finish uh, this small application. Uh, so I'm not logged in at the moment. Let's uh, add a few additional links. So I will have a link to the dashboard page and a link to landing page. So if current user will have a link to what is the dashboard path, static pages dashboard path. And if we are not logged in, we will have uh, a link to uh, home page or landing page. Oh, oh, yeah, just to the root path. So root path, if we are not logged in. So it will be else link to root path. Or actually, we can have the link to root path always visible. Let's uh, see. So here we have the link to home. And if I log in, The link to dashboard is also visible. But uh, at the moment, dashboard link works uh, even if we are not logged. Oh, no. Actually, both links work if they are, do not work if they are not logged in. So we, we will skip uh, authenticate, authenticating the user for the home page. I will go back to our controllers. Here we had before action authenticate user. And here in the static pages controller, I will just say, skip before action authenticate user only uh, for dashboard oh no actually only for landing page let's see so uh, i'm not logged in i have home page that is visible without being logged in dashboard that is visible only when i am logged in and when i'm not logged in i will also have a couple of additional links so to sign up or to register. So let's add these uh, links. Uh, else I will have a link to register and link to uh, log in. To log in, it would be new user uh, session path. And to register, it would be new user registration path. And that's about it. Here we have a basic application with the device setup. We have a link to log in, to register. If we are logged in, we have access to the dashboard page. If we are not logged in, we have access to the home page. And again, to summarize, all you need to do is add the, the device views and add data to be false so that all the device forms work seamlessly uh, in Ruby on Rails 7. That's about it. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next episode.